All right now, y'all, let's make sure this thing's recording. Yep, sure is. I cleaned the truck up nice and clean. This seat is broken here, but uh, yeah, let's get going and then we'll, then we'll uh, get to talking. Let's open the windows because it's kind of hot, but then again, I am wearing a thick shirt. Just uh, slid over here, got loaded in an hour. That was good, that was quick. Let's get rolling, we're pretty light. I forgot what it is, but I think it's like 20,000. We're heading uh, hopefully straight through. If not, then tomorrow morning, but if I head straight through, I can find me a load today and uh, maybe head home. Haven't been on the road that long. Listen to this thing purr, though. Knock on wood, it's running beautiful. a trip to Davenport, Iowa. I did a load up there. Well, more like uh, I think uh, Milan, Illinois. And there's a guy in Iowa that's really good with tuning Detroit's. And the uh, main thing I was going for is uh, my truck was limited to 68 miles an hour and I just got tired of being stuck behind another person that's going 68 miles an hour and I was like you know what I'm gonna get that thing unlocked and uh, he did a tune he has like a tune that he prefers to do it's uh, for the 12 7s it's 1850 torque 550 horse but just uh, being in the unknown as far as rebuilt, it's been rebuilt six six years ago. I was like, you know what? Uh, let's just let's just do a smaller tune for now and do 1750 torque and uh, 525 horse, and then later we'll see how the thing does and uh, might turn it up more. This thing would sound great with some straight pipes. I think uh, I'm gonna be putting in new injectors soon. I also got my valves adjusted. I don't know if I mentioned that before. I got my valves adjusted up in uh, Fort Wayne when I was there last week and uh, it's a good, uh, let's say, family friend, and uh, he checked the engine out, and he's got a few classics in his fleet, and uh, he's a mechanic, and he said, you know, everything's great, engine's running good, I mean, it has blow-by, but that's how Detroit's are, and it's expected, you know, at that mileage. He said I wouldn't touch it, leave it as is, but he says he would recommend getting new injectors. Uh, I don't know, he checked them out, he said uh, might be a, not a bad idea and plus, you know, it'll increase your fuel economy. That money you spend on injectors, you'll get back on, on, on fuel economy savings and, and, you know, it'll increase your power. So I think uh, once I get new injectors, we'll see how much turbos are. I might even upgrade my turbo and do an 1850 tune. Or I might just stick to it as is, like this. I like don't want to go because I'm not sure about those guys down there. If they are going. And they are.
telling me that you know when you say 100 torque the truck doesn't have much more power it really doesn't it's just that i feel like turbo spools up higher and then the power is smoother and also at the idle it idles much much smoother i might be making crap up might be just all in the head but i'm telling you what my thoughts are like it, it really pulls nice it was down on top of that just being able to pass people on the interstate it's just like such a huge plus because a lot of trucks are like also limited to 68 and it's like the most annoying thing ever well it's still recording that's good news uh, i think my camera is gonna die soon so i'm just gonna keep labbering so if it randomly dies out you know what happened tires actually but I think they're 22 fives which I think are my trailer tire size I'm not sure I know my truck is 24 five I would know because I just spent $2,200 on four of them and we're heading west and they also happen to be Yokohama's This lane only goes right. It's not a good place to be broken down. Like, like, I mean, like, look at that. That's like a brand new Cascadia. Already crapped out. Probably like death issues. 99.9%. It's crazy. For the cost of death system on that truck, I can rebuild my whole engine and upgrade it. You know, I mean, for fleet trucks, it makes sense. You know, it really does. The fuel savings and plus, you know, they buy those trucks brand new and they just don't have issues with them and they sell them at at that warranty expiring period so it works out for them and if i owned the fleet i mean i wouldn't buy old old classics or whatever old trucks i mean i might get some gliders but it just makes sense to get trucks like that good fuel economy and everything so you know why not but if you're uh, an owner operator and you're looking to buying your first truck do not buy an emissions truck with 600 700 000 miles you know, you're just looking for trouble, in, in my opinion. Yeah, I was looking for a longer run, and this is only like, uh, I had 20 miles deadhead, and I have 120 miles loaded. So like, this is a super short run. But uh, then he said, oh, you can go straight through. I, I was all on it. Plus, like, it's paid pretty darn good. Yeah, you know, I, I've thought about, like, making videos on, like, comparisons, like, between company driver and owner-operator, how much money you can make, and just like i just don't want to put my personal finances up there and plus on top of that there's always a guy who's just unrealistic and i don't want to give people wrong expectations but i would say if you're not making over three times the money as an owner operator versus company driver then and i'm talking about after expenses after everything 
then it's it's really not worth being a owner operator for you still alive still alive good news but then again you know everyone does different fright some people do specialty you just can't compare I'm talking about dry van industry I think uh, if I come home for Friday, I'm gonna make a visit to uh, DMV and get my tanker endorsement. Something's rattling up there, it's really annoying, but I managed to fix my radio in, it fits nice, but uh, there's a plate behind here that I don't have on this new skeleton that's supposed to lift it up so it's not sagging like this, you probably can't see that. And then this side piece over here is still rattling because it's broken, I need to buy a new one. I call a Freightliner and they quoted me like $300 for a cheap piece of plastic. So I was like, dude, screw that. I'm not paying $300. So I'm gonna try to source it online. If not, I'm gonna take that one off and, and bondo it or fiberglass it, sand it and paint it. Call it $20 fix. I ain't paying no $300, $200. For the top panel and the side panel, they quoted me $500. And then uh, I was also thinking about replacing my main like engine harness. That includes my headlights and uh, on that harness they quoted me $1,700 so I was like you know what I'm just gonna keep uh, keep dealing with my uh, wires and then connecting them with heat shrink wrap so screw that I pay no $1,700 for some wires crazy sensor harness I might get it's like 400 something dollars if the sensor keeps giving me issue it's working now uh, if any other sensors keep giving me issues, I'm gonna get the sensor harness and then uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, I don't wanna have a rude cut off and uh, that video just ends, so I'm gonna try and end this nicely. Thank you guys for watching. It's gonna be a short one today. Hopefully we get unloaded and get going and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Right, yeah, we're posted in the Nards. Again, because uh, I went to my delivery and it won't take me till tomorrow. It sucks because I had a really good load lined up to go pick up today. Called the guy to see if uh, I could pick it up tomorrow morning, and he said, "No, you'll have to take me off it." It is what it is. I'm gonna try get some hardware and then uh, find a spot to park for the night and work on the truck. Go. Pretty crazy. I've never been to uh, Menards to their uh, back lot. To give you a miter saw, you can cut this up yourself however you want it. Since I needed some 2x4s for my toolbox that I have on the side. But that's nice. You don't have to go hunt someone down to cut it for you. You can just do it yourself. And you got a miter. Alright, let's go check out those bolts and get going. All right, y'all, we're here. This is our truck stop, Arby's parking lot. They have truck parking, as you can see. There's quite a bit of it. It's literally the only spot in this town that you can park a truck, other than like Walmart and whatnot, which you'll probably get towed. Funny story is uh, I was in Menards and uh, obviously got my bolts and whatnot, and then like, the next plaza over there was a chipotle and so i stopped literally like five ten minutes went inside uh grabbed my food and uh guy going on my way i come in, I come outside and there's a freaking karen standing by her car typing on her phone taking pictures looking at my truck so i guarantee you she was calling towing like dude like i just don't get it like do you not have better things to do I'm just like looking at her. She's like looking at me while I get in and she's staring me down and stuff. Like, dude, holy crap. Like, go find something to do. Like, I literally stopped to get food and she literally seen me and ran over there. Like, holy crap, dude. So funny. But yeah, uh, just posted right here. Bought some bolts, bought some hardware, bought a bunch of stuff. Uh, I bought all types of sizes. As you can see. All types of uh, grade eight 
size bolts because I want to use them to mount my interior AC unit, my outside AC unit. Uh, I'm going to use them to do the seat, seat belts on the seat. I'm going to use them to remount my toolbox on the side. So yeah, a few things, but they're definitely like not crazy expensive, you know, and, and they're worth the money because they're strong and they're not going to snap. Um, the tools themselves, let's see how much they cost me. I bought a lot of tools. So the tools themselves, give or take, were like $45. And I mean, let's break this down. One bag, washers. These are not grade eight. They didn't have any grade eight for, for a quarter inch. Bolts. Something fell out, so I guess, yep, there's more washers. These are three-fourths washers, not grade eight, obviously. Then some chocolate, some more grade eight, some more nuts, washers, washers, bolts, bolts, nuts, and some washers that I spilled. So, I mean, this is quite a bit of bolts for the money. I mean, yeah, they're kind of pricey if you think about it. They're just bolts, but... You know, you got to pay for the quality. But yeah, that's the plan. We're going to get some stuff done, hopefully. And then, uh, yeah, I got the rest of the day to just relax. The weather is nice. I don't got to run my truck. So it is what it is. You know, these things just happen. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will catch you guys on the next one. Stay safe. Now, I know I said we were going to end the video in there. But I figured I'd just show you guys. Like, I think it's pretty impressive that all of this stuff fits in this box. And uh, my issue is the box is wiggly and just having the support down here, as you can see, these washers are almost sinking through and I feel like eventually they will just rip through the aluminum. So what I'm going to do is uh, drill holes in these two by fours and then use these two by fours from the inside. Unfortunately, I forgot about this piece here and uh, I didn't take that into account when I was cutting these two by fours. So, uh, I'm gonna need to get another one. The fifth one that was left over happens to fit. So I'm gonna fit that one here. And then uh, when I get a chance, I'm gonna fit the other one in the corner. We'll see how this thing acts. Uh, and then uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, let's do this thing. We're gonna push it in and then go from there. So as you can see, I got the thing lined up. The best way, uh, since I have to drill new holes, which, uh, Obviously don't line up with these holes since I want to push this in more to create a step right here uh, I use a strap strap it down and then drill the holes from the bottom and just delay two by fours in there And then uh, those two by fours will give me more structural rigidity. So yeah, let's do that All right, y'all. So we did some updates So right here I added a step Not only is it just a step, but it adds a crap ton of structural rigidity to this thing because I think this is about a quarter inch thick. This is what we use for a toolbox. And uh, you'd be surprised how much fits in here. And this thing right now is like rock solid, not going anywhere. And it looks pretty nice. Aluminum will rust. So yeah, looks cool. Let's uh, jump on to the next project. Okay, y'all managed to actually get quite a bit done. Got my seat belt buckles on right there and then i uh, did the step over there actually tightened this step and i'm not sure if i showed you guys but i installed some springs on here anyways i think that'll do it for the day thank you guys for watching and uh now we'll catch you in the next